Well, you know, lately we've hosted some best-selling writers in Studio Q, uh, established literary stars like Margaret Atwood, Douglas Copeland, Nick Hornby, to name a few. Now, these authors are all members of a fairly exclusive club, those who manage to make a good living from writing alone. But here, in this season of book launches and prizes, let us think for a minute about the situation of the first-time writer, the new author. Having their manuscript accepted and signed by a publisher seems almost the least of their problems because as soon as that published book hits the store shelves, they're expected to get out there to beat their literary drum and compete for the public's limited book-buying dollars, sometimes even when they have a day job. Take our next guest. Catherine Burrell is a first-time author with a day job. She's a producer here at Q, a coveted producer here at Q. Her memoir, Corked, has just been published. It's about a journey she took with her father in an attempt to bond with him over something dear to his heart that she knew virtually nothing about. That would be wine. Now that book is in stores for the world to read. It seems her work is just beginning, and Catherine Burrell joins me here today in Studio Q. Hello, Cabo. Hi, Jean. Nice to have you. Thanks here. for having me. I appreciate it. I do. <laughs> Seems like only an hour and a half ago I saw you. Just moments ago. Prepping for the show. <laughs> <laughs> there I was at the computer. This book, I know. You know, we know this in the, the Q staff watching you. You you painfully run home and, and work on this book while working here. You did take some time off, but this book took two years of writing and rewriting, uh, after work on weekends. Now comes the selling part of the process. Did you? Uh, Did you expect this to be as demanding as you've been telling us it is? I didn't think I'd expected it to be as demanding. Um, What what I've come to realize is that it's uh, the the amount of effort I'm putting into this uh, this publicity attempt is commensurate to the amount of effort I put into the writing and rewriting of the book, just in a completely different capacity. So the difficult part was to sort of shift gears out of um, crying and writing and (laughs) doubting and fretting. And now it's, you know, it's now out of my hair and into the hair of the world. And now I'm crying and doubting and fretting, but in a completely different way. Because Although you spend years honing your craft as a writer and then sure. now you have to, your, your craft needs to be promoter. And, and that's the thing and I've never, I've never really, um, I feel a bit embarrassed self-promoting and so I'm, I'm trying to find, you know, different and interesting ways that make me feel like I'm not, you know, sh- shouting, shouting it over the rooftop, rooftops even though I want to because I, I feel proud of myself but it also it's, it's, uh, you, you don't want it, you don't want to be seen as flogging the book in a direct sense. What have you been expected to do? Um, the first thing that they told me was, uh, you got to make book trailers. So the, uh, the, the, the posting went up on amazon.ca and they said, you get more hits if, if you make book trailers. And I was like, book, book trailers. I, I had, I had no idea that this was even a thing that, that writers were doing. Right. And you know, what, what I thought was going to happen was I was going to be handed an envelope with my press tour and tickets and, uh, and, you know, various literary events that I would be appearing at. Red on. carpet appearances. Yeah, so, so is not the case. <laughs> I mean, obviously that that was a delusion of grandeur, but I did, th- I did think that there would be, um, a, a more a more sort of concrete strategy, but I think it's it's shifted so much in the last few years in terms of the publishing industry is in trouble. I think that people don't quite know what to do with Twitter and with Facebook and with these social networking systems and 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 how how to capitalize on them um, in in a way. You know, the, the literary world and the internet world are two disparate worlds, and so to to meld them in a manner that is productive for the writer, I think is is still a tricky thing. Is is part of what you're saying that there's more onus now on the writer to be at the center of the promotion. Uh, uh, even even at the center of the creation of the promotion, then publicists or a publicity team, uh, that would have been the way it was in the past? I think so. so I mean, uh, in, in my case, I, and I can really only speak personally because I, I don't have a, a, I have a bit of perspective, but mainly I'm just speaking from what what my experience is. And I've written a memoir, so it's it's inherently about me, right? Because I am at the center of the book. It only makes sense that I will be at the center of, of the promotional campaign. Um, but I don't, I don't actually... Um, uh, I actually totally forgot the question that you just asked me. <laughs> That's good. I'm I'm happy. I'm so good at this on the other side of the mic. Uh, the question is whether whether you feel like authors like yourself, uh, new young authors, need to be more at the center of promotion than than they would have had to have been in the past. I think because we're relying on the internet so much, I think that there is um, not an expectation, but I guess almost a wish that the author becomes a meme. Um, I I made a couple of, uh, of videos. Uh, they were book trailers, but I decided not to do straight up book trailers, but to do little. What's ins- a straight up book trailer? A straight book trailer um we had, from we had nick or? cave in the other day and right. nick cave's got this great book trailer where it's him beautifully lit sitting in a chair and it's just him reading from the death of bunny monroe uh and it's done in, in a very sort of lovely you know cinematographic way yeah, yeah. um because i don't have any platform I'm, I'm a completely new writer people don't know who i am i decided to make it useful for people so i made these two little videos um one of my party tricks is that i know how to saber champagne i can cut the top off a bottle of champagne with a large heavy knife so i thought wouldn't that be a funny thing to teach people on the internet so i made kind of i i 
uh, told told my friend Jeremy. Who's Loosely got a related camera. to the book. Loosely related to the book. There's there's wine in the bottle. There's wine in the book. So that's what I did. And so uh, I thought it would kind of be a funny, uh, slightly bombastic way to promote the book. So here's something that people can use. Here's how you cut the top off a bottle of champagne with a knife. Thankfully, I had a friend who was guest blogging for Boing Boing uh, at that particular week. I asked him if he would he would post it. He did. And within a couple of weeks, I had you know 41,000 hits on these two videos that I had made, which was completely unexpected. Are they still up? They're still up. Hopefully, they could, you know they'll translate into some kind of sales. Where, but, did, where but do we knows? find them? If you just go to uh, if you go to Vimeo Vimeo.com slash Borelcore, all of my all of my videos oh, are on there. Gonna, we'll put a link to that. Yeah, put a link to it. I feel silly dot flogging my slash Q. <laughs> but it's, you keep saying the feel so, silly flogging part. I mean, one of the interesting things about working on this show, as you know, is we get flooded with material sure. from uh, from artists and from creators, from from politicians, from whomever. Uh, you know, packages, press releases, uh, gifts. You know, mm. and I feel like I've learned so much in this process about. And when I'm counseling artists, young artists, or, or in my managerial ca- capacity with musicians, what I, I I I know what I do and don't don't like when it gets comes to me as a media person. What what works for me, and what doesn't, what I feel like is overspinning or mm-hmm. or flogging or or what I'm really attracted. To what have you learned in that process, and how did that educate the way you wanted your book promoted? I think you've you've got to have a voice, and again, I'm lucky because the voice of my book is my voice. So I, what I wanted to go in there with was a voice that is hopefully funny, authentic, offbeat, something that because a pre- press releases, unfortunately, it's almost like they work from a template, right? You read a pre- if you've, you've read one press release, you've read a hundred press releases. So um, I, my idea was to. Um, just make sure that the voice that I was expressing in the book was what how I was going to promote it. And I haven't I haven't sent out a press release. I haven't. Um, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure that my publicists have. But in terms of the way that I am personally doing the marketing, you know, I've I've been building my Facebook site, for example, for the last two years. Not 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 with really any direct references to the book, just sort of using my Facebook status update, for example, as an example of what my voice is like. So mm. if you if you like the fun, hopefully the funny stuff that I'm writing in my Facebook status update. If you if you like my posts on Twitter, these hopefully they they become these microcosmic representations of what you might get on a larger scale in my book. But it's hard. It's like writing haikus. You know, writing haikus is a skill you can hone forever and ever. And 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 all of a sudden we have these these mechanisms now that which require us to almost sell oneself in a. 140 characters and and you have to be I think sort of two shades two shades above apologetic because people don't people don't like the shill people don't want the straight the straight sell right it, because it feels um, exploitative or it feels too uh, self-satisfied or self-mythologizing or whatever it is so it needs to be they need to be getting something out of the interaction I think with you that they find uh, funny informative offbeat something that they're not getting in you know, on, on the wider I've level. Got, uh, I've got 15 seconds, 20 seconds right. left here. Uh, you decided to release this book at the same time as Dan Brown. Yeah, that's like that's like a <laughs> diplodocus fighting with a newt, you that's, know? <laughs> There's no competition there. It's another conversation, <laughs> but good, good on luck. you. Good on you for fighting the good Thank fight. Thank you. The book is called Corked, a new memoir from Catherine Burrell. Uh, it's published by John Wiley and Sons, and she'll be apologetic, but I can tell you, pick it up. And uh, cue at cbc.ca. Twitter, she's <laughs> under 